Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a good blessed day. The title of the lesson asks a question, is America a Christian nation? You know, a little over 10 years ago, President Obama declared that this is not a Christian nation. And of course, uh, that caught a lot of attention, a lot of news media. And there was an uproar by many people. Many of the le religious leaders of the land were all upset about it. And some, some in the news media were upset about it. And they had raised an outcry that resonated for weeks after he said that. Now, the truth of the matter is, Obama was right. See, as Christians, how should we view the statement that America is not a Christian nation? Well, when you think about it, there's only one thing that is Christian, and that is a Christian. Now, we can have things that are uh, related to Christians and call them Christian, but that really doesn't make it so. There's a lot of Christian colleges, but a lot of them are nothing more than secular organizations. There's a lot of Christian hospitals and uh, Christian schools and Christian orphanages and, and stuff like that. But just because it might be run by Christians doesn't make it Christian. And so, we just have to need to look at this. And so, how should we view this? Now, obviously, we know this nation was founded upon biblical principles. And they followed many of the rules from the Bible in how to treat others. And so, and of course, that gave it a lot of success. Um, this country became actually the greatest country that has ever existed. And so, this nation was founded upon biblical principles. And there's also many who are actually Christian who live in this land. But sadly, there are many more that do not acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior of mankind. Jesus Christ taught us that it is those who keep his commandments who will be his true followers. And there's a lot of those who claim to be his followers, but they don't keep his commandments. So let's look at this for a minute. There's many who profess to be Christian, but their lives do not reflect it. See, immorality is rampant in this country, and people want to participate in all sorts of immoral behavior, yet they still want to be considered Christians. And so there's something to that. So the most dangerous people that are facing the true church of Christ is not the atheists or the Muslims or the Marxists, or other such groups, the most dangerous group that's facing the church today are those who are uncommitted to Christ, uncommitted to God. And in other words, they claim to be, but yet they don't. Titus 1.16 describes these people. They claim to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. See, there are many who excuse themselves from church attendance, but they certainly expect to be listed on the roll call up in heaven. And we know that's true. And so, um, in much of our land, we, we recognize sin is promoted as a healthy, normal lifestyle. And it just keeps going farther and farther. Once they accepted one type of sin, the next one was right around the corner, and we predicted that, and we, we called for it, and sure enough, it has happened. Now, all of a sudden, the pedophiles are working to get normalized and in some states they're they're being allowed to practice their evil of preying on children so they used to be called child abusers now they're just called lovers and that is a real tragedy when that has happened but they want their rights and so People want to involve in whatever sin they want to get involved in, and the quicker they can get the lawmakers to make it legal, the better they feel about it. Actually, you know, what they're doing is just ramming it down our throats. But we know sin is rampant in our society, and to deny such is just being naive. See, fornication is rampant, and literally, there are more children giving birth these days than in times past those that don't get an abortion, and there is no shame to such behavior. It used to be a, an unwed mother was treated like um, a, a plague on society, but nowadays they seem to be honored. And of course the politician is going to throw all sorts of money at them for doing so. 
and the homosexual community is very organized and they bring pressure upon anyone that would expose their lifestyle to sin. I mean, look at what we used to call clean, wholesome channels like Lifetime and Hallmark. And guess what? They're bringing it into their programming. And, oh yeah, the homosexual community, they're happy about that. Actually, they don't call themselves the homosexual community anymore. They, they, they call themselves an alphabet community. L, G, B, T, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And they're going to add some more as time goes along. Yeah, I should have put the P in there, right? Okay. But anyway, um, several years ago, you know, even Apple added, an, yeah, we're adding applications right and left about different things. And they, they had an app that if anyone considering leaving the homosexual community could get some support and some help. Well, the gays, the homosexual community, thought, thought, brought so much pressure upon Apple that they removed the app. But Apple kept the app where any homosexual could find a sex partner simply by pushing a button on their phone or their computer. And... Uh, so that, that's the way the world is, and I, I'm sure there's lots of apps for stuff like that. Now, here's where one of the major problems lies. The love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. 1 Timothy 6.10 tells us that. Now, when we think about it, drugs add billions to our economy. I mean, alcohol and strong drinks and the collateral damage it causes brings billions to our economy. Fornication brings billions to our economy. Just about every vice you can think of contributes to our economy. And that is how, how somehow supposed to make it okay? I mean, think about that. That is why we cannot win the war on drugs. And they're not going to stop the human trafficking, human sex trade, and illegal gambling. They're not going to do it because it's, it contributes money to the economy. So that's why they won't get rid of the drug war. I mean, that, that's, that's a big chunk of money. And the, the, the officials, they realize that. So they let it go. They, they make a pre pretense. They make a showing every now and then. They get on and talk every now and then about a big drug bust or something. But uh, they haven't stopped it. They can't even keep drugs out of prisons. They can't keep drugs out of high schools. They can't keep drugs out of elementary schools. They can't keep drugs out anywhere. And why? Well, because the people want it. That's the problem. The people want it. They won't stop the sex trade because there's too many people who are wicked enough. They want to practice their fornication. So they're not going to stop that either. And there's money in it. So that, that's why all this stuff is going to continue. And it's just, this world is going to get worse and worse because the Bible says it will. And the sad thing is that many of the preachers of the land, there's deceit taking place from them. See, they teach people a false sense of security that once they're saved, they don't have to worry about losing their souls. But see, these same people, can, if these same people continue to sin at will and violate any and every command of Christ... They will lose their souls. The Bible teaches us that. But, according to the Bible, only those who do the will of the Father in heaven will be accepted by him. You know, Matthew seven twenty one. And so, sadly, more and more, many of the preachers of our Lamb deny the deity of Jesus the Christ. They deny that he was God. I mean, they say he was a good man and he, he set some good principles but he wasn't God in the flesh. So they're denying that. And so according to the Bible, this makes them an antichrist. You know, 1 John 2, 22, anyone who denies Jesus, the Son of God, is an antichrist. And some groups do not acknowledge Jesus as Lord. But the Bible teaches us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to God except through him, John 14, 6. So these, those groups that pretend to worship God without Christ, they're being deceived by their preachers and their spiritual leaders. And there's many preachers who are doing their best to remove the authority of the Bible and simply by claiming the Bible is to be outdated or obsolete. 
Well, the Bible says that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God abides forever. And when we look at it on the day of judgment, Acts 20 and 15, when it says books were opened, guess what? The Bible is going to be one of those books. The Bible as it was originally written, not, not retranslated by some of these various groups. See, it does not matter that most of them have creed books that extol the Bible as being the inerrant, infallible word of God, fully sufficient to accomplish the will of God. If the Bible is so fully sufficient, why do they keep their creed books? I mean, question, honest question there. Why do they keep their creed books if the Bible contains everything they need? And the Bible even claims that itself. Second Peter 1 and verse 3. He is, through his divine mercy, he has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So everything we need, God has already given us in the Bible. Why do we need something else? But here's the reason they teach their error. And I'll quote from the scripture, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wishing to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers of their own desires. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 and 4 talks about that. And so that's why it, they, it continues to teach because people, they don't want the truth. They want the lies. They want to feel good about themselves, but yet they want to continue in their sin. And these people tell them it's okay. God still loves you and you don't have to worry about it. You're still going to go to heaven. So... These people walk the streets at night and either prey upon others or they uh, sell their bodies or whatever. They're being told, oh, I get to go to heaven, and they, they continue on in their ways. All right, see, the Bible warns of adding to the Bible and taking away from the Bible. When preachers do not preach the whole counsel of God, they are removing parts of the Bible. And when they preach their opinions and feelings they're adding to the Bible so that's not going to do them any good on judgment day see the Bible is the Word of God and it is truth completely truth a lot of people don't like to hear that truth and we know that see the Bible tells us we must be careful and diligent to do all that the Lord commands and that just seems to be something that many people have avoided for most of their lives. In fact, a lot of people for all of their lives. And even those who go to church, they try and avoid as much of it as they can because they're not willing to give up the world. So, we do not know the future of our nation that we love and respect. I mean, this is the greatest place on earth as far as many of us are concerned. We've seen pictures and we've heard stories from other nations and other places and we wouldn't want to be anywhere else I don't want to leave this country for any reason uh, to go somewhere else because this this country is great and it has been for such a long time but yet there's things taking place now that cause us to question that what are these people up to and why are they being allowed to do these things well once again money is involved and sin is involved and if a politician wants to be on the good side of the majority he doesn't work on taking away the sin he doesn't work on taking away uh, anything else so uh, now that they have no problem trying to shut down churches they have no problem doing that even though the Constitution says they shouldn't do it uh, they, they come up with reasons to do so and so, folks, we need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our leadership, just like Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. He desires all men everywhere to pray for all men everywhere. And so we should be doing that. We should be praying for our leaders. We should be praying for our first responders and our firefighters and uh, everybody in this nation. We should be praying for them that they would seek God and turn to God for guidance. Sadly, the reality is, if you look at it, they don't want anything to do with God. And they, they despise God, and anybody who wants to speak up for God, 
they, they, they start chewing them out and yelling at them, even beating them up. I mean, look what they're doing across this land. They're, they're being bold enough to walk into churches and disrupt churches. So we should pray that they turn to God for guidance. And we should pray for our coming generations. You know, our, our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren. What's their world going to be like? I mean, we've seen ours turn, up, turn around in just a matter of a few years. You know, when, when the President Obama promised to fundamentally change America, he did so. He really did. And he did it in eight years. And it's still continuing on. The changes that are taking place, and we have too many who are unwilling to put a stop to it. And we just got to pray for leaders that will put a stop to it. And so... We need to pray for our coming generations that they can keep the freedoms to practice their faith. And we should hope that they do have faith. That's something else we need to teach them. See, we should do our be best part to warn people of the consequences of continued sin. And we can cry it out, but we also know we're going to be made fun of and called different names for doing so. We'll be persecuted for telling people they need to stop their sin. And so we must teach the coming generations after us the respect for God's word and the consequences of turning away from him and his word. So despite all the wickedness and evil in our land, we do not have to participate in it, folks. And that, that's the point we want to make. We don't have to be involved in this sin. We don't have to be doing involved in the fornication and the the homosexuality and all that other stuff. We don't have to be involved in supporting this stuff. We have a choice. Well, luckily, we still have a choice. We can vote, and we have a choice there. But we can be faithful to God and let our light shine and lead others to Christ. That's what we as Christians can do, and that's what we need to do, and that's what we better do if we hope to go to heaven. So... Consider these thoughts, folks. I mean, it's, there's a lot to digest there. But we do need to pray. Pray hard. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our spiritual leaders that somehow they're, they're willing to be bold enough to speak the truth instead of being a friend to man. You know, Paul said there, if I'm trying to please men, I made my, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a friend to God. So uh, we have to obey God rather than men. And when the people in the pews start demanding, well, we want our sin, and the preachers give in and let them have it, that's it. I mean, they're, they're going to stand before God and answer for that. Consider those thought things, folks, and uh, uh, share this message with others, if you will. And uh, hopefully, Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another lesson. All right, bye-bye for now.